Okay, YouTube, I'm back again. Um, at you know, at, at the request of uh, one of the YouTube viewers, um, you know, I'm going to make a video on how to make this wood gas stove. Uh, but I'm going to step it up a notch, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a wood gas stove that you know actually util that utilizes a fan, and it also is you know up on you know uh, some type of stilts or something like that. And I'm going to show you uh, pretty much what I'm going to use in order to do it. Now, this may look a little more complicated than what some folks have done on as far as for their wood stoves. Um, but the only reason I'm doing it this way is because, uh, you know, I just kind of want it to look nice. So, essentially, what I'm going to start out with, uh, okay, I went to Home Depot and I bought my gallon paint can, okay. And I also bought my quart paint can. Okay, this will be, uh, well, this will be the burn chamber and so forth. Um, it comes, obviously, it comes with two lids, okay. All right, I'm going to utilize uh, both of them. Um, this device right here, it's, is, this is simply a, um, a storm collar, as they call it, a storm collar. And what this is going to do is it's just going to simply sit on top of that, okay. This is going to, this can this paint can is going to sit this paint can is going to sit inside of here and this sits on top of that and that's what I put my frying pans and you know whatever else pots and so forth on top of here this is uh you know galvanized uh, steel and uh, you know I put it here and you know that'll provide me with a uh, pretty uh, decent surface um, also, I went to Home Depot and I got these bolts, okay, these bolts here, and, you know, essentially what I'm going to use these for is just, you know, they're just going to be bolted to this gallon can so it can sit up top, and my fan, just a standard computer fan, this fan is going to be placed on the, on the uh, underneath the bottom, and it's going to, you know, force air up. Okay, I also have these screws here, the, uh, or these bolts, which are I'm going to use to bolt the fan uh, to the can. And I'm going to use um, uh, this material here. This is just simply something, you know, I cut off a, a piece of plastic uh, notebook that I had, you know, and I'm going to use it to make a radiant barrier, okay? Because this fan right here, it's, it's going to be far enough away from the burn chamber, but, you know, with the heat, it, I've, I'm al I've already melted one fan, so uh, at least the, the front portion of it here. So I'm going to create a radiant barrier using this right here is some aluminum tape, okay? Uh, you can find this over in the H, uh, H, HVAC section um, of your local hardware store. Again, this is just a piece of uh, notebook, plastic, uh, old plastic notebook that I had laying around. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on top of this. And then this right here is a piece of, you know, plastic that I bought from a little plastic knob or something that I bought from Home Depot. And I'm going to stick, simply stick this here and I'm going to stick that on top. So it'll kind of provide me with my radiant heat barrier to keep from melting my fan. I also uh, bought these washers here. And these washers are just simply going to be spacers um, between the metal, the bottom of the metal can um, and my fan there. To kind of, you know, keep it away, you know, to help, uh, help it uh, with the temperature, keeping it from burning up basically uh, or melting. And these are some little uh, adapters. Uh, these are double. These are for uh, power adapters, actually, that you could buy from Radio Shack. And these are just for four AA batteries. And I bought two of them and put them together in serial, so it'll give me 12 volts. Now, yes, I can get a 9 volt battery and so forth, but I have some rechargeables that I could, you know, use over and over again. Uh, this right here is an old uh, little solar. Uh, cell that I had um, I did you know from some old device that I had and I just kind of took it apart and I I bought this uh, 9 volt plug uh, from Radio Shack and I simply just you know soldered it onto the back 
So I'll be able to run the fan off of solar or battery, either one. And this right here, I'm just going to, uh, you know, connect to this particular fan so that I can have an adapter or some type of connector to connect up to the uh, bottom, uh, to the uh, stove itself. Okay, and now again, very simple, you know, tools or uh, parts and pieces that you can get from, you know, Radio Shack or Home Depot. Um, I'm going to use a marker. Um, this right here, uh, this scraper, I'm going, this is what I'm going to use to uh, put a hole in this thing. Okay, uh, this thing here, I mean, it's, it's really easy to kind of to deal, to deal with, to cut and so forth. So I'm going to use this tool to kind of just poke holes around. I'm going to use this particular punch, this hole punch here, to, you know, put holes in the bottom of the can. Okay. And some, and I may use some silicone sealant to just kind of, uh, you know, when I uh, put the radiant heat barrier onto the fan, I'll just use some silicone uh, to kind of adhere, to add, so it can adhere to the fan. Um, I'm hoping that this will be a lot more heat resistant than things like crazy glue or something like that, but I really haven't decided. Um, you know, my standard drill bits and so forth. I'm going to drill some holes into the can. So, uh, the drill, main drill bits I'm going to use are the, uh, 3 8 5 16 and the 1 16 for the little small holes. Um, so... These are all my tools that, or my parts and pieces and tools that I'm going to use to build uh, this uh, wood stove um, that's, you know, with the fan and so forth. Okay, wish me luck. Thanks a lot, YouTube. Okay, YouTube, the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hole right here in, in this gallon uh, paint can cover, okay? A hole that will allow this quart can here to fit um, you know inside and you know and become a the burn chamber now what I'm going to do since I'm on I'm the only one filming this and I only got two hands uh, what I'm going to do is essentially I'm going to use this sharpie okay and I'm going to draw a circle around this particular uh, container and then I'm going to draw another circle. Once I drew that circle, I'm going to take the lid and I'm going to put on top of that. And I'm going to draw a circle within a circle. Okay. And from that inner circle, I'm going to kind of cut around it. And then I'm going to uh, kind of put it uh, to make it so that this will fit neatly on the inside of this can. Okay. Stand by, you two. Okay, YouTube, you can see um, that, you know, at this point I drew the circle, okay? Again, just to kind of reiterate here, and, you know, first I drew the circle for the one quart can, you know, drew a circle around it, so it kind of gives me a starting point. I just kind of eyeballed it, you know, it's, I know it's, it's not exactly centered. Um, I just eyeballed it the best way I could, you know, and the next thing I did was I just took the little smaller, the lid, Okay, and drew another circle within, just like so. Okay, now, at this point, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this tool, okay, and I'm going to, and you can use any kind of tool, really, because this is soft metal, and I'm just going to go and just kind of poke holes, or holes around it, and I'm going to take this middle portion out. Okay, I'm not going to do it all the way back here. I'm going to do it in the inner circle. Okay, remember, I'm going to do it in the inner circle. And I'm going to, I'm going to remove this, uh, this piece. Okay, okay, stand by, YouTube. Now, just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm doing, I'm just simply, you know, taking this little tool and just pressing, pressing down. And just putting little indentations right there. Now, if you've got one, you know, a can opener from a Swiss Army knife or something like that, I mean, yeah, it'll work too. And you know, right now I'm just, you know, I'm taking my time, so it's not, you know, this, it may look, it may look tedious, but it isn't really. Okay, so I'm just simply, I'm just going to go around, okay, and just make little indentations, and it's going to be nice and perforated when, or nice and, you know, serrated with serrated edges when I'm done. You'll, you'll see. Okay. 
But essentially, I'm just, I have to get this portion out. And it's got to be neat. Okay. All right. Stand by, YouTube. Okay, YouTube. I have taken the middle out, as you can see. Um, here's the uh, middle here. Okay, you know, it didn't take me that long, maybe five, six minutes or so. So I've got the middle out. Now, obviously, you know, this is not gonna, it's not gonna fit in there just yet, okay? So what I've gotta do is take these edges and kind of fold them down a little bit. Just fold them down. Um, I may need to do some cutting or something like that, but, um, you know, just, just so that I can get the can um, inside. Okay, when these fold down, it's going to also serve as key, uh, as holding the uh, inner can. It's going to hold the inner can uh, in place. Okay, it's going to hold it in place. Okay, all right, hold on, YouTube. Okay, YouTube. Um, now, what I did was I actually kind of you know beat it around the the, the edges there so that I could you know kind of get the can to fit through it so what you have to do is just keep beating it and beating it and beating it and uh, eventually the can will really kind of just you know uh, kind of go through right down the uh, right down the middle there okay all right okay hold on and we shall continue okay YouTube um, what I did was I also you know took this particular tool and I kind of, uh, I don't know if you'd be able to see that because of the glare, but I kind of went around the edges, okay, kind of, you know, kind of truing them up a little bit, kind of pushing them in just so that it'll get a nice tight seal. So, you know, I'm just showing you where I did it around the edges, but I, you know, with a little more force, just, just kind of just chewed it up around the edges just a little bit. Now we have a can that is capable, okay, of going and sitting inside of the big can. Okay, we have the beginnings of our wood stove. So we have the, this is the inner burn chamber, okay, and this is the outer container, okay. Now, let's continue. Okay, YouTube, for this next phase, uh, what we're going to do, we're just simply going to grab our fan here, and we're going to kind of mark out where we want it to be, okay on our paint can here okay um obviously because of this particular fan it actually the air blows in blows out of this side but it doesn't, at this point it doesn't matter because all i'm doing is marking spaces so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh get a hammer or something and i'm going to use just hit these nail uh, just so i can poke holes poke holes uh you know indicating where my fan is going to go okay on the outside all right, this is the next step. So, but, so because before we can put these, these bolts so that, you know, they're, they're going to become basically a stand uh, for our stove, we have to mark out uh, where we're going to put our fan. Okay, stand by, YouTube. Okay, YouTube, I've hammered in my little fan here so I can mark out my holes. Take it off. there okay so now I have the holes where my fan is going to go so what I'm what I need to do is to be extra careful that when I drill my hole it has to be within the uh, circumference of you know of these four markers here I can't go outside of outside of these boundaries okay so it has to be in the middle okay now I also can put my bolts okay around on the outer edges okay so that I can you know kind of get my stand together okay they're gonna be right on the outer edges here okay stand by YouTube okay YouTube to ensure that I don't go out you know uh, don't mess up the hole you know, everybody's got some old vitamin, you know, bottle tops, you know, in their house, you know, for the most part anyway. And so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to just line this up, you know, and I'm going to cut, I'm going to draw, you know, use the Sharpie. 
Okay, and I'm just going to draw a circle around that, you know, within that around that around that perimeter, and that way it kind of gives me a guide. Okay, just to kind of keep everything good to go. Okay, stand by, YouTube. Okay, YouTube, I have pieced my, I've got my little circle there, and uh, so, and what I'm going to do is with the same tool, I'm just going to go around, you know, I'm just going to go around the edges, okay, so I can get a perfect circle, and and get rid of that, uh, that, that uh, this metal in the middle here, okay, stand by.